Hi, my name is Alexandra Gray. I'm in fourth grade at Bledsoe Elementary, and the story that I'll be reading, I mean telling, is Jack and the Giant Barbecue. Okay, here I go. Once upon a time, there was a young boy named Jack who loved barbecue. He would ride his pony all the way around West Texas just to get a taste of really fine ribs or sausage. One day, Jack asked his mother, Mom, how come all we ever have for dinner is tamales? How can we never have barbecue? His mother teared up before replying. I can't, she said. Every time I even smell barbecue, I think of your father. And then I start crying. I can't eat barbecue with my whole plate full of tears. What happened to Daddy? You never told me. I guess you're old enough to know. Your daddy would make the best barbecue in West Texas. He would win every single contest there was. Then one day a giant came along. He stole your daddy's recipe book. It just broke his heart to lose that book. He just keeled over and died. From then on, I couldn't even stand the taste of barbecue ever again. Jack made a vow right on that spot. I'll find the giant wherever he is and I'll get back my daddy's recipe book. And if I don't, may I never taste a bit of barbecue ever again. He set out the next day. Now all the storybooks said that the giants lived way up in the clouds. The only way Jack knew how to get that high was to climb Mount Pecos, the highest mountain in West Texas. So the next morning, he rode his pony to the foot of the mountain and began climbing. When he reached the top, he um, stood up on the clouds, and it wasn't long before I could smell the faint scent of barbecue. He followed the smell as it got stronger and stronger and stronger. It led to a beautiful shack as wide as a football field and as tall as a 10-story building. The sign near the door should have said Giant's Barbecue, but the G and the Q dropped off long ago. So now all it said was Giant's Barbie. The rest of the place didn't look much better. I mean, shingles were falling off, windows were broken, the door was drooping on its hinges, and the parking lot was a sea of trash. A tornado hanging this place would be an improvement, Jack exclaimed as he cautiously opened up the door and crept inside. Hello, anybody here? He asked. The inside didn't look that fine either. Grease stripped down the walls and giant rib bones scratched under his boots as he walked up to the counter. Hello? Anybody? He asked again. Just me, Lonesome and Blue. I knew I was here looking for the giant, but I don't think you will be here when he shows up. The voice came mysteriously from a jukebox in the corner. Jack walked over to the jukebox and began telling his story. The giant stole my daddy's recipe book. I aim to get it back, Jack said. Count on me to stand by my man, or boy, the jukebox began. I hate that giant. He promised me a mansion on the hills, so I'd be the happiest girl in the whole USA. So they ended up somewhere over the rainbow in this dump. You bet I know where your book is. It's right in my 45s in slot D9, right between your cheating heart and Poncho and Lefty. So Jack climbed into the jukebox, but just before he could grab the recipe book, a pickup pulled into the um a pulled up, a pickup pulled into the parking lot. A mighty big pickup. The giant! You got a tiger by the tail, boy! Hide! The jukebox screamed. Jack hid in just the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. For right after he had hid behind the records, the wall shook. The door bounced on its hinges as the giant came in and sniffed the air. Fee, fi, fo, fum, a Texas boy this way has come. I'll dip him in salsa and pico de gallo and swallow him down for Cinco de Mayo. You're crazy, the jukebox exclaimed. Crazy for thinking anyone come in here. Mm, what you smell is trash. You should clean it up. It's giving me the honky-tonk blues. Aw, oh, shut your tater trap, roared the giant. Hey, I'm hungry. What's for supper? He reached into the smoker and pulled out 10 racks of rib and 50 feet of sausage. 
and washed all of it down with 12 dozen pitchers of sweet tea. Then he tossed the trash on the floor, leaned back in a rickety old chair, and soon was snoring up a thunderstorm. When the giant had fallen fast asleep, the jukebox told Jack, Hey, have you found a recipe book? I can see it, but I can't reach it, Jack replied. I'm going to need more time. Funny how time slips away. Soon the giant will wake up. And you don't want to be here when he does. Get me out of here. You can look for it later. But how do I do that? Jack asked the jukebox. Simple. Put me on a couple of these skis. I mean, put me on a couple of these rib bones. They're the size of skis and the floor is slick with grease. Just line me out the door. It'll be like skiing down Mount Pecos. So Jack did just that. Soon, they were soaring through the clouds. The race is on, the jukebox said. About then, the giant woke up with a hankering for barbecue. He noticed that the jukebox was gone, and he saw the and when he saw the grease tracks on the floor leading, through, leading out through the door, it didn't take him very long to figure out what happened. When he did, he turned hotter than a pepper sprout. He roared into his giant pickup truck and took off through the clouds. But Jack and the jukebox were flying. They soared easily right through the hole in the clouds and landed safely under Mount Pecos. As for the giant, he wasn't so lucky. I mean, he saw the hole, but he was going way too fast to break. So he ended up crashing all the mountains in West Texas flat. Since then, West Texas has been flattened as a skillet all the way to New Mexico. And as for Jack, he opened his own barbecue shack. He serves the best barbecue in West Texas. The giant worked for him. It was the only way he could get decent service. Ma waits tables and the jukebox plays all the latest hits in country. If you're ever in West Texas, stop by. It's not that hard to find. Just look for the sign. You can't miss it. It beats Jack's giant barbecue.